As everyone knows, Sylvester Stallone is not in this film. However, does Jonathan Major fill that void? We are about to find out. Chase Lackham here with a Blue Futon reviewing Creed 3. What's it about? Very simple premise. This takes three years after Creed 2. He's retired. He is done with boxing world. Now he's kind of taking care of his father's gym. And, you know, he's living the great life with his wife, with his daughter. So much so long, like I said, not in the picture. But all of a sudden, someone comes from his past. Diamond Dame. And he is pissed. You can say he's pissed, but let's just say after 18 years being in prison, he wants the title belt because when they were younger, he had golden gloves. He was like the best in the LA region. Now we have brotherly love. That's not love anymore. It's hatred. And they are battling for LA. So, did I like this film? It was a pretty good sports movie. Uh, when looking at this Creed 2 and Creed 3, I think I would put it maybe above Creed 2. But to me, Creed 2 and Creed 3 are pretty identical when I come to watching. And if I want to watch them again, I don't think Creed, the first one, it doesn't compare whatsoever. But let's talk about the positives of this film. With Michael B. Jordan behind the camera for the first time, I think he does a fantastic job. He truly does. You just tell there is competency behind the camera. And I give him applause for that for being his first film. And probably a decent budget for this being his first time. Which I would truly would trust him because he was in the filmmaking process of the first and second Creed. With Stallone, with Ryan Coogler, uh, with uh, Capel Jr. If I'm saying his name right for the second movie. So... I have no issues with how it's filmed. Maybe a little bit with the anime inspiration, especially with the first fight as well as the last fight. The slow motion just felt out of place for all the other Rocky and Creed movies. We can go into the negatives for that. Of course, you have Michael B. Jordan, Jonathan Majors, Tessa Thompson. Everyone in this movie does a fine job with what they're given. They're big motherfuckers. Let's put it that way. And another thing is like when I see Jonathan Majors go head to toe with Michael B. Jordan, maybe I don't know a lot about boxing, but my God, I think that force behind Jonathan Majors would be like, I don't know if Michael B. Jordan stands a chance. But that is just me knowing diddly shiznit about boxing. But I think the setting, the locations, and what they're doing, just the aesthetics of the movie does work. And yes, can you say it's formulaic? Absolutely. But with a boxing movie like this, of course you have like other ones like Raging Bull, Southpaw, I don't find any issues with this sports movie and how it is told, even though it is very formulaic. So let's go to the negatives of the film. Even though I think this negative is going to be a very much a personal preference for what you want in a boxing movie. For me, I'm not an anime person. Like, Naruto, Dragon Ball, not a goddamn clue about any of those shows. Like I said, if I do watch anime, it's going to be the blood and guts, the guns, the violent type of movie. Like, you know, Parasite. Death Note. I'm watching a Black Lagoon right now or Blue Lagoon. That's like Quentin Tarantino, John Woo shit that I think that is absolutely funny. So when I talk about what I didn't like about what was filmed with the first and second boxing match, they did a lot of like, you know, eye shots. Okay, sure. I'm fine with that. But there was some slow motion in the beginning where I was like, ooh, is that really needed? Because with that slow motion, you are getting rid of the one cuts. And that's why I really like Creed 1, what Ryan Coogler did. It was a bunch of no cut, just let the camera roll, and we're going to circle around these people for the next two, three minutes, and it's going to be just a no edit, no bullshit. We are getting this whole boxing match by that. But here, there are more edits, which isn't daunting, but you can totally tell, like, yeah, I kind of wish it was just more fluid and less just one take type of shots. And the last boxing match. I do don't know if I like what they did with going from round 2 to round 12. I understand the emotion and why they decided to do it because it is basically two friends. I'm going to say quote unquote friends of, you know, hatred just coming out of the gloves. Like you could tell there's hatred and the gloves are coming out and in this, you know, 3 minutes times 10 rounds in this 30 minutes, if one could quote unquote 30 minutes, it's just balls to the wall shit is occurring. And people are saying there's a lot of anime references. I can't tell, like I said, what they were. But how he decided to do it, it's interesting. It's different. 
But I feel like he... I understand that you want to do something different because, you know, you could say from Rocky 1 to 5 to Rocky Balboa to Creed 1, Creed 2, there wasn't a lot of difference in the storytelling. You could say the storytelling didn't really change in the third one as well, but he tried to do something different. You could give him props, like, yes, you try to do something different, and some of it was good. But like I said, when you do that, it takes me out of the movie of, like, how much of this is actually hard. I know that sounds weird, but it just feels like the movie was too easy for Michael B. Jordan and Jonathan Majors. Yes, when Jonathan Majors was going through the 18 years of prison, no, that was not easy. But when he cheated to get into a spot, it just felt super easy. And we just everything just went really quick. And all of a sudden, you have a montage of Michael B. Jordan training to go back in the boxing ring after three years, and then the final battle, and that was the end of the movie. I don't see a Creed 4 happening. I know they want to do a Drago movie, which they kind of set something up in this movie, which, honestly, I could see a Jonathan Majors Drago one because there's something that happens in the third one where you're like, yeah, there was a setup that could lead to a new spinoff spinoff of the Rocky franchise. But as a movie as a whole, it is very enjoyable, it is very watchable. I think it is a personal preference of how you're going to like how these action sequences or boxing matches are so told as well as shot. But I can't complain. The two hours went by pretty quick. And even though it's formulaic, you can still enjoy yourself without Sylvester Stallone, which you can kind of feel that that would be a good scene for him or that would be a good scene, but he wasn't coming back. So Creed 3 will receive. A three and a half out of five of futons, which equals at 70%. So, see the correct news scores gave this one. I'm going to guess they're both in the 90s. We have Creed 3, a 87% with 226, audience score at 96 with over 1,000. Here's Creed consensus. Stepping out of the Rocky Balboa's iconic shadow at last, the Creed franchise reasserts its champion status thanks to star Michael B. Jordan's punchy direction and a uh, Nosset heel, I'm pretty sure I said that name wrong, turn by Jonathan Majors. Yeah, I have to agree, but I think that the next movie, I would agree, Michael B. Jordan might be a good one to direct it, but it's Drago or this Rivera character with Jonathan Majors. And then bring back Dolph Lundgren, maybe. I don't know. I think that's the way to go. But if Michael B. Jordan directs it, I, I can't be mad whatsoever. So 70, 96, 87, Chase Hawk with the Blue Futon. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know things Blue Ton Topia. You Blue Tons are watching. Have a great day. And so far, pretty good movies overall for for this year. I mean, some stinkers like, you know, Fear, Children of the Corn. But overall, I can't complain too much.